Robert Felice is going to get there. There's no question. He squares it. There it is. It's a number. And it's Mumbo Rodriguez again. Hey, and welcome back. It's me, your host, Finister, for episode 11, season one, player profile on, you guessed it, Joe Corona 15. I still wanted the Dynamo to give him number 19. So we could say Corona 19. Um, <clears throat> one thing I will tell you recently, I've been watching a lot of Narcos. Narcos. And I've learned more Spanish from Narcos, binge watching it on Netflix, than I ever have in school. Than I ever had in school. So if you're looking to learn Spanish, start watching Narcos. And start at the beginning with Pablo. Technically, Mexico is the beginning. Maybe you should start at Mexico. And then go Pablo El Chapo. El Chapo. So, let's do this, man. Let's do this. Um, Joe Benny Corona Crespin. Born July 9th, 1990. He plays for our club, our one and only club, the Houston Dynamo. Speaking of them, thank you for the sweet-ass hat. I'm wearing it right now. Shit looks good. For real, I like the new logo. I understand our problems are bigger than a logo, but it's an upgrade. I like it. I think it's tight, son. So, Joe Corona is of Mexican and Salvadorian descent. His mother, Yanira Crespin, was born in El Salvador, and his father, Angel Corona, was born in Mexico. He's got one sibling, a sister named Miriam. Joe was born in Los Angeles, California, and when he was three, his family moved back to Tijuana, Baja, California. Tijuana, Baja, California, Mexico. When he was nine, the Corona family moves to San Diego, right across the border, okay? About 30 miles north of Tijuana. Corona begins playing organized soccer at the age of nine. Keyword is organized. I highly doubt that at nine years old, he picked up a ball for the first time, right? Organized. So in San Diego, he spends some time with the youth soccer club Aztecs FC and come on you hot spurs, uh, come on you spurs, hot spurs USA FC before he joins the San Diego Nomads. Corona attends Sweetwater High School, obviously he plays for the soccer team, for four years. During his senior season, Corona captains the team to a league championship and was named the San Diego Union Tribune Player of the Year in San Diego. That's pretty good, Joe. Corona graduated from Sweetwater High School in nearby National City, and after he finished high school, he received a partial scholarship to attend San Diego State University. You know the Aztecs? The Trojans? Either way, you guys should have given him a full scholarship. Don't mess with our boy Joe. In his freshman season, Corona has three goals and one assist in 15 games. Right before his sophomore season, Joe Corona's sister suffers a stroke. His parents have to take time off to take care of the sister, and Joe Corona can no longer afford San Diego State because of the medical bills. Joe leaves San Diego State, looks at community colleges, so he can get a cheaper education and have a part-time job to help his family financially. Good on you, Joe. That's, that's the right move. Mate, oh, lots of respect for doing that. After he leaves San Diego State, one of Corona's friends says, Hey, man. Why don't you attend an open tryout for Mexican club side, Mexican side club Tijuana? They play in the Liga de Asensio at the time. He impressed during his tryout and he began playing with the Zolos reserves. His parents wanted him to continue his education, but Joe was like, nah, I'm going I'm to pursue a professional career on with Tijuana. I don't think he said it like that, but either way. So four months with the reserves, Corona gets promoted to the Tijuana first team. I love saying Tijuana, right? On April 3rd, 2010, he makes his debut. Comes on as a substitute, and they lose. Uh, Corona makes three appearances during his first season. So this guy drops out of college and gets picked up by a professional team in Tijuana. Very good. So far, so good. The 2010-2011 season, Corona gets himself established with the Tijuana first team. He scores his first goal on August 29th in a win. He plays in 15 of 17 matches to help Tijuana finish at the top of the table and qualify for the Lig oh, Jesus. Liguilla, Liguilla semifinals. 
Joe doesn't get in either game. Okay. Um, but his team advances to the finals. So Joe doesn't play in the semifinals. But in the finals, he plays in both legs. And they beat Veracruz 3-0 in aggregate. All right, we got a guy that won. For the 2011 Clausura season, Corona scored three goals in 15 appearances. Uh, Tijuana finishes fourth. He plays in all six of the Zolos games in Liguilla. He scores once. Tijuana reached the final, where they lose 2-1 to one over two legs. Aww. Since the Apertura and Clausura had different champions, a promotion final was held between Tijuana and Irapuato. Corona does not show up in the first game. Does not feature. Second game, he has a goal and assist as his team wins 2-1. to one. So Joe was responsible for both goals. And Tijuana gets promoted for the first time in club history. So now they're up. They're in the big one. Bam. All right, here we go. On July 23rd, Corona scores Tijuana's first ever goal in the Premier Division. It's a 2-1 to one defeat. But Joe Corona scored Tijuana's first ever goal in the highest level of Mexican football. That's a big deal. Okay? He also scores in the second game as they get smoked by Monterey 4-2. Corona ends the Apertura with two goals from 13 games, and Tijuana finished 15th. So that sucked. Okay? Corona was named the newcomer of the year in the, the Mexican top flight. In the 2012 Clausura, he scores twice in 14 appearances, helping the Zolos finish 7th and qualify for La Guia. Corona starts both legs in their quarterfinal matchup with Monterey. Monterrey. Pero Tijuana lose 4 3 on aggregate. Yeah. Corona ends his first season in the top flight with four goals and 29 appearances. Sometimes my Spanish accent's good, other times it sounds like a gringo trying to do a Spanish accent. Sorry. In the 2012 2013 season, Corona appears in 14 of 17 games. Tijuana finished second in the table. These guys had their first promotion like two years earlier. Corona is going to start both games in the semifinals, where Club Tijuana defeat Club Leon 3 2 in aggregate. Tijuana gets to the final against Deportivo Toluca. Corona starts both legs, and Tijuana win 4 1 in aggregate. They win the 2012 Apertura title. Apertura, I am ruining these words. Corona makes 14 appearances that year. Um, my bad. In the 2013 season, Corona makes 14 appearances, but Tijuana finished 10th. Okay? Tijuana also took part in the Copa de Libertadores. Corona scores once and makes seven appearances. Um, Tijuana, they reach the quarterfinals, but they lose to Atletico Mineiro. So across all competitions, Joe Corona makes 41 appearances during the 2012-2013 season. Okay? So there we go. Now, <clears throat> the Zolos that year also compete in the CONCACAF Champions League. Corona plays in every game. The Zolos reach the semifinals, but they lose to the, the, the Blue Cross, Cruz Azul. Those guys were good when they came up and beat the shit out of us. Very exciting, very fast. 2014-2015, uh, Corona makes 13 appearances during the 2014 Liga MX season. The Zolos miss the playoff, and they finish 11th. Aww. So, Joe had a rough year that year. <clears throat> Maybe this is why he gets loaned to Veracruz in 2015. So, he gets loaned to Veracruz. He makes his debut in a 4-1 to loss to Club Leon. Corona makes nine appearances, has two assists. Veracruz finish 8th and qualify for the playoffs, but he does not appear. He makes four appearances in the Copa MX. Veracruz reach the finals, where they lose on penalties to eventual champion Guadalajara. Right? The Guadalajara cartel. So then he goes on loan to Sinaloa in 2016. He makes his debut, and they lose. He only appears seven times for the Dorados de Sinaloa, as they finish 16th, and they're relegated. So... That was a tough season. All right? So he goes through two years of loans, and it's a, it's a rough stint. So he comes back to Tijuana. All right? Signs a contract extension. He ends the season with two goals and two assists in 16 games. Tijuana finished atop the Clausura. 
Um, they lose in the semifinals to Tigres. <clears throat> and Corona appears four times in the Copa MX as they reach the quarterfinals before they lose to Monarcas Marilia. Corona makes 11 league appearances that season. Okay, 2017. It's a rough season. So you know what happens next? He gets loaned to Club America for a year. Yep, that's right. He plays 15 times for Club America. They finish second. He appears once in the playoffs as they lose to Santos Laguna in the semis. They also competed in the CONCACAF Champions League. They reach the semifinals where they lose to Toronto FC 4-2. So he's had some good runs. This guy's had some experience, man. Uh, he comes back to Tijuana for the 2019 season. He shows up uh, three times, and then he's sold to the Galaxy. Now, when he's at the Galaxy, this is when we probably get to know him a little bit better, being MLS people. Uh, he makes his debut on March 9th, plays the whole game against Dallas, but they lose. Ah, fucking Dallas. He scores his first goal in September as they defeat Sporting KC 7-2. I don't know if that's a typo. That was a whooping. Where were you at, Zussi? Corona ends his first season with the Galaxy. One goal, three assists from 31 regular season appearances. I'm getting the feeling that Joe is more of a defensive midfielder. That's what I'm feeling. Like in my heart. Looking at these statistics, he's a guy that's a defensive midfielder. Like I said, I'm not a pro. I don't know the answers. But the Dynamo have him listed as a forward or midfielder. These stats scream, he's staying back, he's playing defense while the other guys push forward. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. In 2020, Corona scores his first goal against the Portland Timbers, and he's named the MLS Team of the Week. This, unfortunately, is the COVID-19 season, right? During the pandemic, Corona plays in 16 out of 23 games for the Galaxy, who finished 10th and missed the playoffs. The Galaxy decline Corona's contract option. We all know what happens next. Austin FC select him, but Austin FC couldn't close the deal. Austin FC is looking pretty dangerous. Love their fucking stadium, and their fans are like into it, man. It's pretty cool. They're going to be trouble in a couple years, but I can't wait to go out there and watch a game. I'm not going to Dallas. Dallas can eat dicks, all of them, just surrounded by dicks. The city of Dallas, huge dicks in the sky. Just bah, knocking shit down. So on December 22nd, Joe Corona gets selected by the Houston Dynamo in stage two of the re-entry draft. And we signed him. We signed him. That's right. He signed through 2022 with a team option for 2023. We got three years of Corona. And you know in Houston, midfielders can play till they're 37 or 39. I don't know if that's on purpose, but that's what we do. Yeah. So, internationally, Joe Corona was eligible to represent the U.S., Mexico, or El Salvador. El Salvador head coach Ruben Israel approached Corona about representing El Salvador, but Corona decided to represent the U.S. or Mexico. He was named in the preliminary match roster to represent the U.S. against Mexico. Okay, so Corona goes on to represent America, the United States, America, right? He records a hat trick in an Olympic qualifying match over Cuba. Yeah. They also beat El Salvador 3-2. to two. Oh, no. My bad. El Salvador knocked us out of contention for the 2012 Olympic Games. Jesus. I think Bob Bradley just might suck at this. Seriously. 2012, we hire Jurgen Klinsmann internationally. Uh, Corona appears again. So, yeah, Joe's been around. CONCACAF appearances. Uh, Los... Copa de Libertadores, men's team. He's been around. Stats-wise, 349 career matches, 17 goals, 20 assists. You know we do a lot of ratios here. Joe has a goal involvement about every 10 games. So, knowing that, what do we expect from Joe this year? I would say a goal and three assists. That's gonna be that's gonna be my guess. No more than two goals, no more than five assists. I do think he's gonna play defensively, looking at his numbers. He has the ability to score, but not a lot. Maybe it's the teams he's been in, maybe it's the setup. I don't know. But I think he's gonna be huge leadership wise. The intangibles that he brings to the team far make up for any numbers, okay? And his defensive quality. We know where that is. 
He's one of the few guys we have on our team that actually played for the men's team. Doesn't anymore, but, you know, we had that talk on social media. Guys, that's it. That was the profile of Joe Corona. Joe Corona. And uh, like, share, review, tell your friends. Put us on in the workplace, but not when your boss is around. Okay? As always, it's been a pleasure. I'll see you next week. Oh, and we are going to be giving away tickets to home games. We're going to be giving away a signed Jimbo Fisher football, okay, to promote and market the podcast. So if you start seeing this stuff on social media about the giveaways, give us a retweet. Retweet it out. Because if only like four people enter, uh, some of y'all are missing out. So like, share, rate, review. Love you guys. Thank you. Talk to you next time. And go Dynamo! Albert Delis is going to get there. There's no question. He squares it. There it is. It's a double. And it's Mumbo Rodriguez again. 